Hello? Okay. Cool. Hi guys. So today we're going to learn how to upgrade steak. If you remember, yesterday we made a 4x4 four four grid. And we did that by copy pasting chunks, cell, cell components, and uh, row components. So we don't want to do that today. So on the agenda, we're going to build a bigger grid. We're going to make it 30 by 30. And after that, we're going to build a game over component. And last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a home page with a start button. So let's see it. So if you already have the code downloaded, just check out today to starter. And to run the game, I'll put the commands up here. to reset dash dash hard if you're having trouble checking out the game.
Can you get a show of hands to see who's still working on this? Has anyone gone the 4 by 30 here to show up? So I'm going to show the for loop solution now. Don't worry if you didn't get the for loop working, because we're not going to be using for loops in their code anywhere. We're going to be using something called map. So just a quick overview. This is not really recommended. Basically, all you do for the for loop, you let x equal 0 go up to grid length. And you do something in JavaScript to add something to the end of the array. You do dot push. And you're going to need, if you see there's two, two open parens right there, and that's because one is for the push operation, you're going to need that. And the other paren is because we're including an HTML, the cell component, and that's why we need that to tell it we're going back to HTML. So you don't have to worry about adding this for loop in your code right now, because I'm going to go back and review how we can do this with map. Because you normally in React, people don't use for loops, they'll use map. Because usually you want to take some sort of data array, you're going to want to apply a function to it, and get some kind of output array. So, Let's review map. I took this straight off of Koei's slides on Monday. But basically, <laughs> input array, we apply a function. We multiply it by 2. And then we get an output array. So 1 times 2, 2, 2 times 2, 4. This is like a relatively simple function. But let's think about how we can apply map to our what we want to do. Instead, we want to do this 30 times. And we want to go from 0 to 29. The function we're trying to do is we're trying to return a cell component. So this is a dummy function. This is not actually real. You're going to want to create a ret and return a cell component. And you're going to want to return an output array of like 30 cells. Does anyone have any questions so far? OK, wow, you guys are good. All right. So first thing, we have to make our input array. So how do we create this array? Who here has coded in Python before? Okay, great. So you probably heard of the use a range function at some point. So and you can create this array by doing list range 30. In JavaScript, there is not a, there's a way to do it, and it's not that pretty. It doesn't make that much sense, but this is how we would do it in one line in JavaScript. And basically, array 30 gets you an array of line 30 with nothing inside, and then array.from and all that junk populates it with the values 0 to 29. And we're going to want to do this instead. So we're going to use array.from array grid length that keys that will give us an array from 0 to 29. And we're going to map that. 
And what we're mapping here is you notice the arrow, the, fu the function we're giving it, is we're going to return a cell. And we're mapping over the numbers 0, 1, 2, all the way to 29. That's represented by x. And we're going to, put in, we're going to pass into the cell these props. Um, that should be familiar from Alex's workshop yesterday. Um, we're going to pass in x and y because you're in the row. The row, you're putting cells in the row right now, so the row number shouldn't change. So it's always this dot props dot y. And then cell content, we need that by getting, using the props we pass down row content at index x. So I want you guys to throw the for loop out the window and add this to your code instead. And you'll know it's working when you see the 4 by 30 away. So you guys can go ahead and do that now. If you guys are having trouble, raise your hand and staff will come help you. Okay, can you explain what the this in this code is referring to again?
Can you guys raise your hands if you're still working? Can you guys raise your hands if you're still working on this? Okay, cool. So, I'm going to move on now. Your game on localhost 5000 should look like this. Wow, okay, that's a 4 by 30 grid. So, exercise. Work with your neighbors. I want you guys to go to GameBoard.js and do the exact same thing for row. And use the map function to return grid length, 30, so basically 30 rows in the whole board. 
Don't forget to include a key attribute and think about what it makes, what, it, what logically it should be. And you'll know if it works if you have a 30 by 30 grid on level 5,000. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're having trouble, and staff will come help you. Thirty by thirty grid on your little box like that. Right. Maybe get a few more minutes. Yeah. So um, you understand the difference? No JS. So because just it. I don't know why it's still accepted from. We put it in the back end, and the back end looks like. I'm going to show you guys a solution that we have on the board right now. So don't worry if you look at it. You're going to have a checkpoint later so we can check out. But basically, the same idea. Um, we're using array, the same array dot from stuff, and instead we're mapping something we call y. And we're going to give it the key y because that's every row, there's 0 t up to 29. And that's, there's 30 rows. And that's just a key we have it. And we just pass the same thing, word content at y. And also pass it the prop y. So we'll leave that on the screen for you guys. But your grid on local 5,000 should look something like this big. And don't worry if you guys have any trouble. Um, we're going to move on and we're going to check out the step two. Reset hard and check out to, uh, step two and NPM is stop.
I'm going to move on now. So, now we want to create a game over component. As you know right now, when you're playing Snake, you're, when you run into yourself, you die, and the game just freezes. It doesn't t let you know when you're dead or not. So we're going to create a component for that. So, go to this folder, um, client source components game, open up gameover.js. There should be, this is the only thing that should be in the file right now. And right now we're just going to get some practice into writing, uh, for writing a React component from scratch. And basically, well, we want a game over model when we run into ourselves. And I'll give you a second to get to the file. Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you found the file? Cool. All right. So, next ex exercise. I want you guys to. I want you guys to see that styling a component and giving it class name and stuff is exactly the same in React as you would do for pure vanilla JavaScript and HTML. So, I want you guys to work with your partners or your neighbors and return some return a component that. Looks like we'll return that in HTML. So basically, we're going to create two nested divs. The outer div will have a class name game dash over dash model, please center. And we're, the inner div is going to have game dash over dash text. And you guys are, don't forget, you guys need to export default the class. So I recommend you guys to look at the other components we've written, like row or cell, to see the structure of a React component. And remember, a component, we have to export it, um, give it the name game over, and we're going to include a constructor, maybe a component in now, and we have a render function. And inside that render function, we're going to return something that looks like this. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to do that, and yeah. Raise your hand if you need help. Staff will come over and help you. And just a little reminder that you can't give a class name in React class because that's a keyword. It's camel case class name.
Shannon, Hi. you always have to call super. Yes. We need that so we can access the props from the parents. Yeah, for your purposes, always call super. Like, if you don't need props in your phone, you technically don't need to call super, but just, just, call just do it. Just do it. It won't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys raise your hands if you're still working? So, okay. So I'm going to show the solution right now. It's fairly short. Uh, the first two lines we've already been providing you in that code. Basically, remember you have export default class, game over. And remember, you always do if it's a component. Since you're writing a component, you're going to extend react.component. That code is, you'll see that in every single one of our components files. And we call this constructor. And to reiterate, we're going to call super props because we want to access the props and it never is. And in our case, we don't have a component did not function yet. We, all, in the, we don't really need it because we're not going to do anything with the DOM right now. Because all we want to do is return a two, two divs. Uh, with game over model center and the game over text game over. So I'm going to leave those two up on the slides there. And now we're into style mode. And I hope you guys learned from Jessica's lecture earlier. But we're going to do some very simple styling. Basically, um, go to client source CSS and open up the game.css file. And we're going to style the components you see on the screen here. We want to style game over modal. And we want it to have added black background color, black, um, 2 pixel border, and 15 pixel padding. And can you can see examples of that because there is already some predefined CSS for other classes in the game.css file. So you can look to that for reference. You can Google it. And as well as game over text, we want to make the font size 30 pixels. So go ahead and do that. Raise your hand if you're having help and staff will help you. They're just dying to help you right now. Look at them.
Botswana, and I'll just show you guys the CSS. Um, styling a component React is the exact same way you would do it, if, even if, if you didn't use React. All you do is add background color, if the number doesn't have to be exactly correct. Add a border, padding, font size, we'll leave that up on the side screen. And tomorrow, we'll show you that you can also use React with Bootstrap. So, excuse me. So, let's go back to the game board. We just, so we just finished creating a game over component from scratch. We styled it, and now we have to include it somewhere. And the place we're going to include it is in game board. So, if everyone can navigate to game board in client, source, components, game, make, and import it at the top. Because if we're going to use a component in game board, we have to import it.
So that should have just been a quick line, and I'll show you guys right now. Is in here we have this fifth dot fifth state, and is game over true? And we don't have to worry about the other field and state. This will update just this one field in the game over state. Uh, yeah, in the game over state. So we'll leave that up on the board screen. So next thing we're going to do is we're gonna do this together. But we now that we have a way to get information about whether the game is over or not in our state, now we can finally make the game over component appear. And we're going to do that in render, because that's where we make components appear. So we've defined a constant. There should be a comment in your file saying define constant here. So you guys are going to put that in there. But basically, we just defined a constant called game over model. And this is a ternary operator from yesterday, the day before, if you remember. But basically, if the state, you access the field of state, if it's game over, then include the game over component. And you don't need to pass props into it because it all it does is show text and we're not accessing any props in there. And otherwise, return null. So null in this React.js format just doesn't return any HTML at all. So if you can see here, when we include this constant that we've just defined in right here on um, outside of the class of the board div, we have game over modal. Remember about, because we have, we have to include brackets because it's not HTML. And what that does is React will not show anything over your game board if you're still playing and if you haven't died yet. And otherwise, it's going to place the game over model and display it over there. So go ahead and add that to your code now. Don't forget the parentheses on game game over because that's not JavaScript. Make sure you put the game over model in the crack div. We don't want to put it inside board because that's where we're rendering ourselves. We want to put it outside of board but still in game container because we want it to be in a weird time. So, right there. I'm going to leave the solution to that on the sides over here. And we're just going to oh. okay. move on. So can you guys raise your hands if you have a game over component? Oh, yay. That's good. All right. So um, don't worry if you did. If you guys are to catch up, do it reset hard. Check out to step three and NPM install. Why do you need to put that line of code there? Oh, 
Well, we're defining a constant, and that's something, that's a JavaScript thing. I remember when in return, we only return HTML. That's why we're defining it outside of return, but inside render. And we define inside render to, <coughs> because we're going to make it appear later, and we want to include it. So, yeah. so this, the second red box can take two values, right? It can either become a game over component, or it can be null. Does that make sense, everybody? So we put it in there, and if the game is over, then it'll show up as a game over component. Whereas if the game is not over, it'll just be null and not display anything. But if you don't put the second red box inside render, then game over modal will never show up, right? Because it's not being returned in the render function. Okay. Can you leave a check out the next one? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll leave that up there. And now we're going to go back to. So let's let's take a look. So we've finished game board. We've done a map on it. We have a 30 by 30 grid. And now we're going to do the home page and the game container. As of now, when you go into localhost 5000, it just immediately tosses you into a game of Snake. We're going to change that. We're going to add a home page that's going to have a start button. And then after you click it, then it's going to get, give you the game of Snake. So. Just a reminder, this is, the, this is the hierarchy of the components. So I want you guys to go, go to the client source components folder. And there should be these four guys um, files here along with yeah, these four guys. And what we're mainly going to be working on next is game container. So open up that file now. Can you guys give me a thumbs up if you found the file? <coughs> Great. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to represent game status in the state, and I'm going to explain how to explain this to you. So the game state when we had when we defined is game over. This is not to be confused with game status. Is game over is something to tell us if the snake is dead or alive. Game status here is solely for the purpose to tell us. Should we be in the home page right now? Should we be giving it the game screen right now? And maybe in other games, you maybe you've seen like a stats page at the end or like um, end page. But we're going to use integers to assign these these components to uh, numbers. Oh, so basically, zero is going to be assigned to home page, and one is going to be assigned to game board, and. I want you guys to initialize game status in state for game container and set it equal to zero because the first thing we want to show is the home page of the game board. So go ahead and do that now. Guys, while you're doing that, I think it's pretty important to think about like. This is like pretty, pretty different from what we've done before, right? In our previous episodes, like Pathbook, right? You have a page, and then that always has a different route. Right? Like slash profile goes to profile, right? And like slash feed has like there's like a feed, right? Like all that stuff is each one has a different express route. But now React, you could hold that in a state and render a different page based on the state, which is like way more useful, right? And that's one of the reasons why React is so much better if right? you're front end when you have like complex. So I'll leave that on the board for you guys. Um, so next exercise, uh, next exercise we're going to do. We're going to write a class function that can change a game state. Because remember, if we're going to initialize the field in this uh, state, we have to change it somehow. And right now, we're going to write this function called change game state. It's going to take in one parameter. The parameter is going to be an integer, and we're going to name it new status. And 
it's going to change the game status field in the state to this parameter that you've fed into it. Don't forget to use the arrow function syntax and the <coughs> set state function. And we're good your neighbors for this. And remember that when you define a function, it's on the same level as constructor and render and component did now. So don't try to show this inside one of those already defined functions. Can you guys raise your hands if you're still working? Okay. Looks like we're on the same page. So, this is how you do it. Um, fairly, simple, fairly short. All it does is set the state to new stats. I'll leave that guy, I'll leave that on the sides over there. So, next thing we're going to do is what Alice told us. We're going to change, um, show a different component depending on the scheme status. And basically, we're going to use a switch statement to return either home page or game board. And we're gonna use, the condition we're switching on is going to be the game status field in state. So you're gonna access it with this dot state dot game status. And for reference, I've provided the switch statement in cell.js just to give you guys um, a good hint. Um, basically, case zero, we're only gonna have two cases because we only have zero and one right now. And you're going to return home page or game board. And don't forget to include parentheses in your return because we're not returning a primitive uh, string. We're re returning an, an HTML component, home page or game board. So go ahead and do that now. Well, we set it to return nothing here. And basically, it's like 
a better way to write if else like if else statements because if you have a lot of cases like conditions to switch on, it's a lot easier to read if you have like versus like else if one and then else if two and so and so. So yeah. You'll know if this worked if you go to local of 5000 and there's something that says my name is homepage, which is a big black, and then like on the middle there's some white text there. Can you guys raise your hands if you see that on your local 5000? Okay, give you guys a few more minutes. So I'm going to show you guys what the solution should look like. Um, basically, inside render, we're going to switch on the state of game stacks. Remember, that can equal zero or one. Zero represents the home page, and you have to include these parentheses there because this is not JavaScript, and this is also not JavaScript. That's why we have the parentheses there. And case zero return home page. Case one. Return game board. I'll leave that up on the screen for you guys. So right now, your local host 5000 should look something like this. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys raise your hands if you see this on your screen? Okay, I'll give you guys another minute. Hey Shannon, how does the switch statement 
know that case zero refers to the state of A status. What? How does the switch statement know that case zero refers to the particular state of game status? Okay, so this is like a syntax of a switch statement, but basically it checks if this dot state dot game status in all of these cases. So this dot state dot game status can we we define them to have zero to return this and one to return that. Is that the question? Yeah. So so the particular syntax of switch is like switch, open parentheses, and then some statement. Okay, and then you have case. Blank case blank case blank. So the switch of the statement, right? So you match that statement with each of the cases. So in this case, the statement is this dot state dot game status, right? So what this syntax is saying is, if this dot state dot game status, which is after the switch, equals zero, then return home page. If it's one, return game one. So that's how we know that the zero refers particularly to this dot state dot game status. If you can see in the Example in cell.js, we also have a switch statement there. And we're switching on the value cell content. So similarly to what we did in home page and game, game board, we it checks cell content equals zero. If so, return cell empty. If cell content equals one, return this. If cell content equals two, return that. Default is when this doesn't match any of those cases. So that's like your else. So. Okay, so we're going to move on now. So hopefully you guys are seeing this on your localhost 5000. If you're not, raise your hand, the staff will come and help you. But, so now we have a small problem. Remember that the carousel Airbnb example that we did with Alex the day before yesterday, where we clicked arrows, and that would change the image body of the car. And we have a problem here because we hold game status in game container. Game container tells, decides whether it renders game board or home page. But if we're going to have a button in home page that if we click start and then it should change to game board, then we don't, like, we can't change the, stat, the state of game container because you can only change the state of a component inside of that component. So, only game container is allowed to change its own state. Home page is allowed to change its own state. But we can get around this by passing down a prop. If you remember in the carousel example, we passed down a prop called the, a prop as a function as a prop called change image to the arrow function. To, to the arrow button, it's not the function. But so we're gonna do something similar here. Because home page is not allowed to change the state of game container, we can do a nice little trick where we pass down the function, if anyone remembers, we defined it change game status here. We're going to pass it down from its parent game container down to home page. So when home page a child um, has access to this function, it can use this function as a, because it's, it was passed down as a prop. And then it's allowed to tell game container, hey, Change your game status to zero. Uh, zero. Oops. Okay. Home page is supposed to be zero. This is typo. Um, to change change the state. So I'll explain this again. But this is the most confusing part of this workshop. So don't worry if you guys aren't fully understanding this. We're gonna keep going over this concept of passing down functions and like explaining this yeah. like this parent function thing tomorrow as well. But basically, what we're going to do, and I want you guys to add this to your code, is inside, remember when we returned home page in that switch statement? We didn't pass down any props to it. This time, we're going to pass down an anonymous function. And if you guys remember anonymous functions from the JavaScript workshop and stuff, we're not going to pass down the function this.changeGameState with like no parameters. And we are going to d instead define an anonymous function that basically calls the function with this parameter one already. There's a reason why we can't just hand this function to the child. The, 
But it's not the home page's job to know that it's been assigned the integer zero or one. It's like it's not the child's job to know, tell the parent, hey, you should go here and and you um, display this instead. Because it doesn't know. It's not its job to know. And we want like the upper levels to have more control. And we want like more of our we want to let our parent game container manage that for us instead. So instead of handing that much control to its child, because if we just pass down this dot, like the function, we would have to put in that parameter one ourselves in the child. But we don't want to let the child have that much control. That's why we define an anonymous function instead that basically just gives a child like a button. Hey, press this, and it's going to do. It's going to change the state to one all the time. And that's the only control we're going to give the child. And if none of that just made, like, made no sense to you, don't worry. Um, Post on Piazza, come talk to us after class. This is the hardest part of this workshop. So don't worry if you guys don't under, like, understand this fully right now. But do make sure to add this into your code as a prop. And we're going to just name the prop like on click start. And don't forget the brackets, and there is a semicolon over there. So add this to your code uh, right now. So this is the complete solution for what we've done so far. The this function we defined, the switch the switch statement, and this anonymous function. So take a minute and uh, fix your code if it doesn't look like this, because we'll we'll be needing this component later.
So some of you might have been wondering, um, why, why should we define this anonymous function? Why can't we just pass in this stop change game state one? And the reason for that is this is a function call. It's a, it's a statement that will call the function no matter what. And we want, we want to define this as an anonymous function instead because we don't always want to call this. Because if we, if we put that in, it's going to call this game chain whenever this component is created. And if we put it in a function, that ensures us that when the child uses it, and like this component is used, only then it can actually call the function. Like this is, we're not passing down the function itself, we're passing down the, func the function call. It's a statement that's already calling this with the parameter in mind. So the difference is like, imagine you have some JavaScript code, right? If you stick in this dot change game state one, it will execute, right? Like it'll execute and change the game state to one, right? It's a statement in JavaScript. Whereas if you pass in a function, this dot change game state, right, which is what we're doing here, right? Say you define a function called change game state. That's not going to execute immediately until you call it, right? And in this case, we want the latter. We want to pass in a function, not a statement. Okay. So I'm going to move on now. And if you guys are having trouble, just uh, reset hard and check out to step four. And Cynthia will do that on the side screen. So. <coughs> yeah, so if you guys are to catch up, you can just check out to step four. So the next thing we're going to do, our homepage is just kind of not doing anything right now. All it says is my name is homepage. We're going to change that. We're going to add a start button. So we did all that um, stuff with the on clicks button and the game, game state. So now we're going to, we're going to, that's where we're going to use all of those thing, the things we just did. So. But before we start that, we're just going to go back to some simple, some simple basic stuff. We're just going to add a title component. And so let's go to homepage.js in source components and replace that string, my name is homepage, with a game title component provided for you. You can see that we've imported it at the top already for you, and we've also already written the game title component. If you want to take a look at this game title component, it's literally, it's very short. It's just a string in the div and something, but yeah. And you'll know this work if you go to your localhost 5000, and, and it's going to be really big. It's going to say React Snake. So I'll give you guys a minute or two to do that. Can you guys raise your hands if you see the title on the local Okay, I'll give you guys another minute or so. So I'll just show the solution right now, and it's simple, just stick it in, and it doesn't take any props, because all it does is show the, set the string we've defined in game title, React Snake. So, we'll leave that up on the side, but next thing, we're going to add a start button, and basically under the game title component we've just included, we're going to add a div with the HTML class name button, and we already have the styles of button there for you and the text start inside. So this is the HTML, and we just want our React code to return uh, this on the bottom. And remember, class is not class in React, it's class 
uh, capital N A in camel case, so class A. And after you do that, you should see a start button on your screen. Oh, the goal is five thousand. And don't worry about this tile, okay? This tile was included when we import, uh, put in the game tile component. So only worry about the one circle in there. Just to recap, 
We made a bigger grid today. We threw four loops out the window, and we used map instead. And next thing we did, we added a game over component, and we made it from scratch. We defined the, uh, we defined the component, we styled it, and just to show you guys, it's the same as if you would have done in regular HTML vanilla, vanilla JavaScript. And the last thing we did today, we added a home page. And the home page, we also added a start button with the function that we passed in from his parent. So, yeah, have fun. Tomorrow, we're gonna, Alex is going to be teaching you guys routing in front end, which is going to be different from, a lot different from what you guys have been used to. And we're also going to go over briefly how do we write cat book in React. And yeah, that's it.